Jesus is Lord. And he was such a nice Jewish boy. <laughs> Jesus changed my life. And he's still in the life-changing business. As Paul said, the love of Christ compels me. You know, Randy, I think most people don't realize how much darkness there is it, in it the world. It can't be just coming to church and getting pumped up with a faith. You and I are all going to have to have something of faith in us. Jesus died to save sinners, and you are a sinner. The following program is filmed live at Grace Community Church in Fort Worth, Texas as part of their monthly crosstalk service. Some of you have been involved with the Today with God project. Uh, uh, a number of you have gone to Cuba and worked with our teams in Cuba. There's been thousands and thousands of people saved in that communist country because of your work and those who participate in the Today with God project. The opening episode of the series is called Who is Jesus? And the last segment of that episode is a song I wrote. Um, it's a worship song just to declare what I believe. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Hallelujah, I am blessed. I know Christ Jesus died for me. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. By grace alone I'm free. Christ has atoned for me. By grace alone I have a home with God eternally. With confidence I say, His Spirit will guide my way. God will empower me every hour to live and serve today. By faith I'm saved today. By the life, the truth, the way, my faith in Him now hides my sin. That faith allows me to say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Give thanks and proclaim, I'm blessed. Salvation's mine by God's design. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. I am blessed. I know Jesus. He changed my life. So nobody has to ask me later on. Some people always want to ask, what's in the bag? And um, I'll tell you, it's guitar picks. But uh, I started writing music about 50 years ago, and I would travel around the country and sing at clubs and bars and coffee houses and street corners, and I was the guy that would pass a hat around. And I was a drug addict and a drug pusher. And I used to keep drugs in the stash bag. But Jesus changed me in a miraculous moment, in just an instant. Uh, I believe in Jesus. I believe in miracles. I believe that anyone's life can be changed, even if you may feel like a piece of human garbage. I know that feeling. But never again. I will ever praise you. I will ever lift your name. I will ever live for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Demons tremble, it's true. Demons tremble, they know you. Demons tremble, I'll be strong. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. What a joy to know you, what a joy to live for you, what a joy to be redeemed, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. I've been saved by the grace of the Lord. I've been saved by the grace of the Lord. I've been saved by the grace of the Lord. He is Lord, He is Lord. He is Lord, and as a result of knowing that and believing that, I will ever praise you. I will ever lift your name. I will ever live for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Crosstalk International and the Today with God project have been at work here in Cuba now for nearly 10 years. In that time, we've seen over 30,000 people be presented with the message of Christ through Who is Jesus Project. And over 5,000 people have given their lives to the Lord for the very first time. Nearly 50 different churches have been planted specifically because of what God is doing through this project. With that influx, we need to support the pastors and their families. We need to help bring in more leadership, and that's where you come in. We have taken on the support of 61 pastors across the island of Cuba, and we'd like to ask your help. For just $50 a month, we can continue to support these pastors. For every gift that is committed, we've got a matching grant, a donor who's committed to double what you give. So your $50 becomes 100, and we can then support two pastors. Give us a call at 1-800-688-3422 or visit us online at crosstalk.org. Now, let me set this down. For a moment, uh, We may still be friends. I hope when we're done, we'll still be friends. But, uh, I, I came to ask you a really, really terrible question. Do you ever think about the end of the world? You know, on any Sunday, you can get a sermon at any church. Today, you're going to be spared from another sermon because we're all young and hip, right? So I'm going to bring you my blog. It's about the economy, something that affects everyone. In May 2020, AFL-CIO President Richard Trumka suggested that America had 50 million unemployed workers. Now, that seemed outlandish until the Labor Department came up with similar numbers. 30% of the U.S. labor force was out of work. Bankruptcies have skyrocketed. Everyone had probably heard about the filings of Sears, Payless, Forever 21, Charming Charlie. Then another slew of bankruptcies hammered other household names like Neiman Marcus, J.C. Penney, Pier 1, GNC, J. Crew, and others. Now more bankruptcies have been filed by the largest operator of Pizza Hut in Wendy's franchises. Brooks Brothers, Lucky Brand, Chuck E. Cheese, 24-Hour Fitness, Gold's Gym, Bell's Department Store, Tuesday Morning, Hertz Rental Cars are all bankrupt seeking protection from creditors. The travel industry is on life support. Name brands have been decimated. Every time a company is deemed insolvent, countless other businesses are suddenly stiffed for the monies owed to them. Remember, one company's debt relief is another company's unpaid invoice. And such failures trickle downhill 
like financial sewage. Now, bad stuff happens in life and in business, and sometimes things just go wrong. But these nationwide forced government shutdowns created a new virus of failure that is extremely contagious. Recent reports suggest that other companies are in deep trouble like AMC Theaters, GameStop, Party City, Steak and Shake, Men's Warehouse, and The Loft. But think about it. Who needs to buy more three-piece suits and ties or women's business attire if you're working in your sweats on the couch and every day is casual Friday? Uh, these facts don't begin to address the world of commercial real estate. Think about the result of so many businesses who suddenly stop paying their rent. If the rent doesn't come in from the tenant, how does the mortgage payment go out from the landlord? Now, on the other side of the quarantine, it's been great for some folks. Every employee who is now working from home and avoids making the daily drive and rush hour traffic, yippee! But what about the gas stations where you fuel up or the petroleum industry that pumps the oil? What about the office buildings that were constructed on borrowed money because companies needed professional space for their staff? Just like vacant retail stores, when offices are empty, if the rent stops, the mortgage payments stop. And very soon, the government mandated forbearance rules will run out. Home renters, homeowners, business renters preparing for some dominoes to hit the deck. We must remember that the temporary grace known as forbearance was forced by Washington due to the pandemic. And so far, folks and businesses who couldn't pay the rent weren't evicted yet. But Washington knows that eventually failures will hit the fan and the bankers are all standing in a long line waiting to deliver foreclosure notices. It might get very ugly when the deadlines on forbearance pass into the pandemic sunset. This is serious. It touches so many people. And let's remember that if workers don't go back to the office, they also don't go, they don't go out and buy lunch at the restaurants near the office buildings. More dominoes may fall if things don't get back to normal. Do you ever really think about the end of the world? If these temporary changes become permanent, there will be financial chain reactions. And don't get me started on the trillions of dollars recently invented from thin air by the Federal Reserve. Our government is mailing out stimulus checks like free beer coupons, pimping loans to businesses that will never get paid back, and printing money for additional loan programs that, if repaid, will not be due in full for 30 years. The government is offering me business loans that won't be paid back until I'm blowing out nearly 100 candles on the cake. How smart is that? Who offers a 30-year loan to people as young as I look? Now, I'm not saying that the government programs aren't needed. They are. But need and affordability are not always the same thing. I recognize that there are genuine needs for such stimulus, and the folks who receive the stimulus desperately need the temporary help. But what if the stimulus fails to stimulate? Do you ever think about the end of the world? What if troubles keep on multiplying? How will these unheard of new government debts be repaid? Even if politicians raise our taxes to 90%, I don't believe it will ever be enough to pay off the nation's newly expanded forms of government assistance. And such higher taxes would kill all hope of new growth. I mean, why take new risks or work countless extra hours to give your success back to the government? That's the failure of socialism and the success of black market economies. And God forbid, if the other nations of the world ever get together and ask us to prove where the underlying value of the U.S. dollar is, we are all toast. The saving grace of the International Monetary Fund and the so-called basket of currencies used to measure the value of money is that the other participating nations are in worse financial shape than we are. In other words, America leads because we're the tallest one-legged blind midget in the world of financial measurements. <laughs> the pandemic has given our economy a massive heart attack while the workforce is standing on a banana peel in a financial ice storm. We are unstable. Do you ever really think about the end of the world? Well, 
Cheer up, friends, that was the good news. Then there's riots in the streets, looting, burning, a serious cry from citizens and politicians to defund the police. And animosity seems to fill the hearts of most folks who own a cell phone and spend their time spewing hatred and discontent over what we call social media. And by now, you may be thinking, I can't wait for the real preacher to come back. This guy's less fun than a root canal. Believe it or not, there's a reason I pointed out all these discouraging concepts. Sometimes it's important to get in touch with the real world so we can recognize it won't last. Do you ever really think about it? the end of the world? For several years now, Crosstalk International has been partnering with the Land of Promise here in Israel to plant trees throughout the land of Israel because we recognize that it's a blessing. So I want to ask you, do you want to bless Israel? I want to provide you a very tangible way to do it. For $25, you can plant a tree in the land of Israel. Call the number on the screen, come to the website, come to Israel and plant a tree. Leave a part of yourself here in Israel. It just can't last. The world wasn't created to endure. God made it clear he only intended it to last for a season. Then a new heaven and a new earth built to last forever will replace the temporary mess that has been polluted by sin. Now, I believe in protecting the environment, but it's just like putting a Band-Aid on a dying patient. God is preparing a home for his children that is far better, and the accommodations in our new digs will be superlative. Of course, if folks choose hell instead of heaven, that will also last forever. But no matter where you spend eternity, this world will soon be passing away. It's only temporary. That's the reason preachers speak about things temporal and things eternal. Some folks get that stuff confused. The Bible declares we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Now, I was preaching up in Canada and Alaska with Johnny Cash's sister in 1987. One morning, we were eating pancakes in a little diner, and I told her, you've never seen a U-Haul on a hearse. And she asked me to write a song about that. The first time I sang at the Grand Ole Opry, we sang that song together. Now, folks seemed to like it, so she joined me on an old music video that you might enjoy. Why gather and accumulate stuff that turns to dust with more zeal than we store up treasures in heaven that will last? Chauffeur driven in a Cadillac All eyes upon you followed by your friends You've gathered and accumulated with intent That long black ride is the living end out of reach Shiny rich Cadillacs don't have no bumper hitch cause you've never seen a U-Haul on a hearse No season tickets to the Opry or no plastic credit card The keys to heaven weren't left in your purse Hitch. 
Cause you've never seen a U-Haul on a hearse We'll leave our earthly possessions in a safe deposit box Or in a locker at the depot by the bus Hitch, Cause you've never seen a U-Haul on a hearse No season tickets to the Opry Or no plastic credit cards The keys to heaven weren't left in your purse So, my mother, she wasn't real big about the Bible, but she used to always quote one particular verse. She said, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Mom always encouraged me to be generous. Mom was always gracious and generous. In a sense, she paid it forward, and that's what we're supposed to do. But the verse actually means more. In a sense, it was calling for diversification. The New Living Translation says, send your grain across the seas and in time, profits will flow back to you, but divide your investments among many places for you do not know what risks might lie ahead. When clouds are heavy, the rains come down. Whether a tree falls north or south, it stays where it falls. Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest just as you cannot understand the path of the wind. The mystery of a tiny baby growing in its mother's wombs, so you cannot understand the activity of God who does all things. And it's my opinion we are not paying attention or understanding the activity of God. It is time to diversify our investments. Jesus is coming. Maybe we should use more of our resource sources for the purposes of God. You ever really think about the end of the world? You know, it takes an incredible amount of faith to believe in a full financial recovery or a return to civility among our citizens. Do you really expect our political leaders to return to working for the common good of all people in a joint effort to solve our common problems? Personally, I think it's highly likely that hatred, rancor, greed, lust for power, and those ungodly influences working to destroy the natural order of families will continue gaining ground and America could become the next poster child for the post-Christian world. I keep hearing things that sound like there are forces trying to drag us into the God-hating socialist agenda of Cuba. Many, many years ago I worked with the underground church in Eastern Europe, former Soviet Union dominated countries. Before the fall of the Iron Curtain, things were very, very challenging in those countries. I continue to work in Cuba. And as a first-generation American, I can tell you that we don't want to face the struggles believers experience in other parts of the world. You may not realize it, but Christians are being slaughtered in Africa. Christians are sold into slavery where no protection exists. In China, Churches are being shut down. Christians are being imprisoned. But what you may not know, there is in China a vibrant organ donor and transplant industry. Political prisoners are kept alive and used to harvest their organs for sale to the people who won't wait to get on a legitimate organ donor transplant list. Human beings are valued for their livers and their hearts. The wealthy fly to China to buy a healthy kidney or lung without waiting. China is forcibly sacrificing Christian convicts of conscience by turning prisoners of faith into human salvage parts for sale. This is the world awaiting judgment because powerful governments won't tolerate those who hold different world views. And my friend, we hold different world views if we are saved and depending on God, not depending on governments. We hold different worldviews, and that's challenging. Communism reduces humanity to a violent exchange of one person's life for that of one person 
or maybe many people, depending on how many organs are harvested. But this is merely one more counterfeit of the devil. You see, Jesus came to exchange his life for my life and for your life. But unlike Chinese prisoners, Jesus gave his life willingly with an eternal purpose. The future is at our doorstep, but it is dark. Before Jesus returns, darkness is unavoidable. This world must be judged. The silent screams of millions of unborn children will not be ignored. We know this. We murder for convenience, plunder for power, compromise with hell, only to bring its influence into our homes to rob us of heaven. The end is near. Our sin knows no limit. However, our God has made his limits clear. This nation has exceeded them and exists on borrowed time. People will reap what they've been sowing. Our nation's abominable sexual perversions, its gender confusion, the oppression of the helpless, the mistreatment of strangers cannot go on forever. Without revival, only judgment remains. I believe God only sees sin in two ways. He forgives it or he judges it. If our nation fails to turn to God, we will continue turning away until it's too late. Read the Bible. Now, I do have an opinion about the future and the coming judgment, but before I tell you my view of the future, I have a short tale about the day I was introduced to the Holy Spirit. I was in a little church, Pentecostal church out in California, and I went to get baptized. Never been in a real church before of any consequence, and didn't know what to expect, and the pastor says, it's testimony time! And this old guy goes up on stage. He walks across the stage. He gets up in front of everybody and he says, I want to tell you about a miracle. Greatest miracle of my life. 30 years ago, I was born again. Now, I was flabbergasted. I'd never seen anything like it. A miracle. So many, many years later, I think back to that moment and I wonder, what was, what was wrong with that situation? What was wrong with that guy? And he'd been saved for 30 years and that was the last miracle he'd experienced. Where's the dude been?